Welcome back to my cluttered garage. Today I have another simple yet really convenient welding project for my Kubota B2601 compact tractor, but really it's something useful for any front end loader and bucket attachment. So check it out. In one of my recent videos, I welded these chain grab hooks to the top of my bucket. And they're really handy for hooking a chain up when you need to drag something along or pull it out of the way. But they don't work all the time for all situations. Sometimes you might want to use a toe strap. And of course this hook doesn't fit very well on the chain grab hook. And if you want to use a strap with a loop on the end, it's not really the best situation to hook to that chain grab hook. If you're using a nylon strap, the clevis hook is really your best bet. So, how do you hook your clevis hook to your bucket? Let's take a look. Your tractor probably came with a hitch bar like this that sticks out of the back. It's obviously removable, but these are great for clevis hooks. You can put the clevis hook on the end of the hitch bar, put the pin in, run your strap through the clevis hook, and it's a great way to pull things. But if you want to pull from the front of the tractor, there's really no place to wrap a strap around the bucket. Uh, there are sharp edges on the bucket that could tear the strap, that could cut the strap. So you really want this nice rounded surface when you run your strap through the clevis hook. So we're going to talk about how to mount the clevis hook to the bucket. Now you want the clevis hook to be removable, so you wouldn't weld it to the top of the bucket. Even though you could do that, you could probably fish your strap through there, but you want it removable. So I bought some blocks for just that purpose. These blocks are machined from one inch steel really a nice job. What this block will allow me to do, I can weld this block to the bucket, then I can mount the clevis hook to the block like this, put the pin through, now I'll have the clevis hook working from the block. But let's talk about where we're going to mount this block. So as you know, I mounted the chain grab hooks to the top of the bucket, and I could mount this clevis block also to the top of the bucket in the middle. My idea is just to put one of these blocks and I'm going to put it in the middle of the bucket. But I received some comments on my last video and folks have said that the chain grab hooks should actually be mounted inside the bucket. The idea of that is that if you're pulling something and the chain comes loose or if it breaks, it'll slingshot back into the bucket instead of over the bucket hitting the operator. Now I'm not so worried about the chains because in my experience, if a chain does break or come loose, it tends to just drop because it doesn't have a lot of spring force in it. But a nylon strap stretches like a rubber band. So if that becomes dislodged or if it breaks, it does tend to slingshot back. So I'm gonna mount this block on the underside of the bucket right there. It won't really get in my way because I rarely fill the bucket that full. And even if I do, it's not gonna catch any debris to cause any problem. So that's the plan and we'll take this into the garage and we'll do some welding. Now, because I don't want to weld overhead because I'm not really a welder, I'm going to set the bucket down on these saw horses and tilt it back so that I'm welding in front of me instead of over top of me. anyway. I think that'll work very nicely. First thing I'm going to do is mark the center line of the bucket. 
we've got 58 and a half to the inside. So half of that would be, well, half of 58, well, half of 60 would be 30. So I can't get this lid off. Half of, half of 60 would be 30. Half of 58. I don't think this marker's gonna work. Hey Siri, what's half of 58.5? One divided by two times 58.5 is 29.25. Yeah, so we're gonna make a mark at 29 and a quarter. Thank you, Siri, I love you. New marker, well, a different marker. Now we'll take our mark, make our mark at 29 and a quarter. Here's a trick for you if you stink at math like I do. You measure 29 and a quarter from one end and you get 29 and a quarter from the other end, you're dead center. Now, because I'm gonna be grinding the paint off this area, I'm gonna make another mark down lower where I'm not gonna be grinding away, just as a reference point. And I'm not even gonna measure it because I can see it's really close. Last time I used a four inch grinding wheel to grind the paint off, this time I picked up a flap disc Sounds like a, something you'd hear in a radio station. Let's tune into the old flap disc. Very nice. So I'm gonna mount this block right here in the middle. Use my 90 degree angle magnet to hold it in place. And we'll just run a bead all the way around with the welder. I'm using the Hobart Handler 140 MIG welder. And I'm running solid wire, 030, with MIG gas. My settings are pretty high because this is pretty thick metal and we'll see how it goes. Not a beautiful weld, but not too bad either. Definitely much less cleanup using MIG gas. All right, well that went pretty well. I'm gonna finish this off with a couple coats of Krylon Farm and Implement paint. This is new Kubota orange. With a quick little search of the old Google machine, I found out that uh, Kubota switched to a new color of orange in 1989. My tractor is 2019, so I'm sure I have the right color. And congratulations to you if your tractor is newer than 1989. It's considered new Kubota orange. Aren't you glad I told you that? And while that first coat of paint is drying, let's see if we can flip this thing back over. Excellent. All right, I took this thing back up.
Well, I'm really happy how this project turned out. Let's try the clevis. Really nice. How's that for a clever clevis? Hey, if you like what you see on this channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and clicking that little bell so you get notifications whenever I put out a new video. Also, I'd love to hear from you to know what you think about the content and anything you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again for watching.